Good evening, folks, and dobra večer. Welcome to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It's episode 49, nearly at that half a century milestone. My name is Tonchi, my name is Tonchi Prusats, and it's an absolute pleasure to be with you delivering another brilliant episode, an action-packed episode, and uh, I can't do it on my own, so I'm going to need some help. And uh, as he does every week, week in, week out, a very good welcome to, a uh, warm welcome to Ante Grabovac from the Harbour City. How are you, Ante? Excellent. Thanks, Tornchi. Uh, beautiful welcome. Thank you so much. And yeah, really, uh, you know, Far out. I've been watching, watching a lot of football over this past week, let me Ooh. tell you. And, yeah, it, it's it's all happening. And, of course, uh, just before we went to air, Spain were the first team into the Women's World Cup final. And so uh, we'll wait to see tomorrow night who they play, whether it's the Matildas or whether it's England. It's going to be interesting stuff tomorrow night. I'll tell you what, the numbers for this World Cup have been huge. Six million people watching the quarterfinal. And tomorrow night it's going to be break even bigger records. It's just amazing that... um. People are going football crazy, which which is good for the game. Absolutely good for the game. Um, Women's World Cup fever has definitely swept the nation, and uh, well, it would be remiss of us not to jump on the on the uh, on the uh, Women's uh, World Cup bandwagon, so to speak. Um, today we've got a real uh, um, real women's female football flavour. So try saying that ten times, holding your tongue. Female football flavour to our show. Our very very special guest a little bit later on is yet another another Australian-Croatian presence in the A-League women's competition. And um, it is Bianca Galic. Uh, Ante, tell us a little bit about Bianca. You know a little bit more about it, uh, Sydney Cider. And she signed for... Central Coast Mariners, yeah. So it's, um, she's coming back from injury, so it's going to be really good to see her back onto the, uh, onto the actual um, field this season. Of course, she's played for Wanderers and she's played for Canberra. Uh, previously, so it'll be good to have a chat with her about her thoughts of, you know, um, her career and obviously uh, what's been going on with the Women's World Cup and um, all things football. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to our chat with Bianca. Now, Bianca, she started off uh, two years ago at Canberra United, then signed up with Western Sydney Wanderers and last year um, missed the entire season because of a uh, torn ACL. But, uh, when she first um, rose to fort fame, if you like, in the W League, as it was known then, the A-League women's competition, um, in the first year for Canberra United, she scored an absolute bomb. Get this. Watch this. There is the scheduling, whatever, that gives them the week off, but only... Oh, and it's up! Amazing goal. Did you like how it did? We just rose and then dipped, and that was an incredible goal. We're going to have to ask Bianca about that particular goal, but um, no, yeah, uh, that's great to see. She'll be joining Central Coast. And Auntie, I'm, I'm going to be real interested to ask is it true? There's reports apparently that the English uh, uh, women's team, the, uh, the Lionesses, that are obviously taking on the Matildas tomorrow, they were based at Central Coast. Apparently, the uh, reports suggest that they left behind, on, on purpose, it was a gift to the Central Coast Mariners, half a million dollars worth of gym equipment. Um, we've got to ask Bianca if she's uh, put that yeah. to her ears. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, that, 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 that's that's a great gift. Yeah, ma- yeah, exactly right. So um, I'm sure everyone will benefit on the Central Absolutely. Coast from, from that gift. Yeah, lots of stuff happening overseas. Like last week, gosh, news was, news was breaking as we were going to air. There was... There was coaching casualties there was um there's all sorts of reports about happening about what's happened with with the supporters well the supporters they're still in the greek jails um over a hundred of them by now um and it's it's almost like um day by day the the story the plot just gets twisted but uh i was um, just watching a little bit of um some live footage from uh, zagreb at the moment like on iptv just before we come in here and there's a real heavy police presence in the centre centre of Zagreb, obviously, uh, very very wee hours of tomorrow morning, Dinamo are taking on AEK Athens in the first leg. It was meant to be the return leg, but it is the first leg of the UEFA Champions League playoff, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later on. But uh, yeah, there's just so much happening overseas at the moment, uh, both domestically, both in Europe, and uh, we'll cover all of that. But 
My goodness me, Aunt Ed. Have we got some winners on the uh, local front this week? Um, we'll talk about that in the um, Australian-Croatian roundup very shortly, won't we? Absolutely, yes, which is great to see. We always love the winners list being full of uh, logos and, uh, yeah, it is this week. And, of course, the other exclusive uh, from last week that, you know, pretty much two or three days later was officially announced via um, the different clubs was, of course, uh, Daniel Nizic uh, moving over to MacArthur. So it was great for Daniel to uh, give us that exclusive last week as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got all the exclusives, we've got all the breaking news, and we've got all the views and opinions. So by all means, folks, pop your comments in the uh, comments section in the chat lines there, and uh, we might even get a chance to read some of them out tonight. Folks, uh, we're going to uh, take a very, very short break. Um, when we return, it'll be time for none other, none other than the Australian-Croatian Roundup with Ante. Don't go away, folks. Who's to say who's young, who's old, compared to who? Age is complicated. You see, most people really stop getting older at age 26, but their bodies just don't get the memo. So hidden inside most over 50-ish year olds is the soul and spirit of a 26-year-old with the same loves and desires and hopes and dreams, just in slightly different packaging. Why waste time wandering when you could be enjoying? It's your life, and life is what you make it. So, what are you waiting for? Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. It's time now for the Australian-Croatian Roundup. Ante, where, would, where do we start? Where do we start? We start with the Australia Cup. Taunchy, of course. Um, first of all, the fixtures that occurred. We went to here last Tuesday night. There were further two fixtures um, that happened, of course. On the Wednesday night, Gold Coast Knights ended up defeating Devonport City by one goal to nil, thanks to a goal by Ludwig in the 54th minute. And then on the Thursday night, Melbourne Knights thrashed Queensland Lions by four goals to one. And, um, yeah, Taunchy, you were at that match and you've got a bit of footage. Yeah, there we go. It was, um, look, it was a, very, a polished performance by the Knights. They just seemed to uh, dominate from start to finish. Uh, Gian Albano, he scored the first and he scored the last goal. He just uh, was on fire. Uh, it was great wow. to see uh, Anthony Giuseppe. He started right from the outset. He's had a bit of an injury-prone career uh, pro pro season this year, but uh, he was really as, as a centre back or as a, as a central defensive midfielder. He just seemed to really, really, really control proceedings throughout the evening. There's the equaliser, but uh, that was pretty much um, it from the Lions. Uh, the Lions had a very good contingent of travelling supporters. There's about twenty or thirty supporters there, almost as many as the uh, home Knights fans. I'll tell you what, aren't there? One of the disappointing things of the night was the the poor crowd. Um, my son and I actually came from Geelong, which is about oh, 45 minutes away from Knights Stadium, and we actually cut our um, training session short uh, to get there. When we first got there, we, we thought the gates were locked. Like We, we knew people were there, but uh, we just thought the gates were locked to the, to the actual Knights Stadium part. But uh, no, no, lo and behold, they actually open. So you can see the bit of a crowd there. But a uh, bit disappointing in that regard. But apart from that, um, look, we had Ben Khan from the Melbourne Knights on our sister podcast, the Football Out West show, just the other night on Sunday night. And a really good interview there. He um, he really was um, familiar with, uh, with the Lions FC, having obviously come from Queensland. And um, look, it was a very good performance. But... I tell you what, if if they come up against a really good side, a polished side, um, they they'll they'll be caught out. So they really have to know, learn to 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 take their uh, chances, even those half chances. But look, all in all, a great performance, great win, four goals. Um, you know, can't 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 Perfect. shouldn't complain about that. That's for sure. Absolutely, well done. Yes, and of course, three of the four clubs have gone through and taught you. Bring up the graphic because, of course, a draw happened last night. And we now know who the opponents are for the three Croatian teams. Sydney United are facing the Brisbane Roar tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow evening, but in the next round, in the round of 16. 
And of course, United defeated Brisbane famously 3-2 in the 2022 Australia Cup semi-final. And so this game again will be at the Sydney United Sports Centre. So let's hope the boys can repeat what occurred last year in that very, very famous victory and that fabulous yeah. Glenn Trafiro goal in extra time. The Gold Coast Knights are at home. They take on Western United. And so um, that's a big clash for them. Obviously, A-League club. And um, they've never played each other. Of course, the United knocked Western United out of the corresponding round of 16 in 2022. And uh, Western United defeated Edgeworth uh, commandingly 4-0 in the round of 32. So, um, you know, it could be a test, but who knows? What, what could happen, you know, on the night? And I'm sure um, Scott McDonald will have his team raring to go and do his homework and, and get over the top of Western United. And then Melbourne Knights are at home to Campbelltown City, who impressed last night. Yes. They actually defeated MacArthur 2-0. Um, 2-1, sorry. And, yeah, they're from the Adelaide uh, competition, from the South Australian competition. And, and, yeah, they did well to knock out the reigning title holders in MacArthur. So, um that will be a test for Melbourne Knights, but hopefully they will overcome that. And people asking about when the dates are. The dates are scheduled to be anywhere between Saturday the 26th of August to mm. Wednesday the 30th of August. So any of those days from Saturday to Wednesday, excluding the Monday. So it could be Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday or Wednesday. The interesting thing is, of course, there's finals happening um, how they're going to schedule this. Of course, Sydney United are due to play their final match of the regular season on the 27th against Sydney Olympic away. I don't know if they're going to change that because, of course, um, you know, it is a final round and so everyone has to play at the same time. Yep. There's all sorts of, um, you know, logistical nightmares that, that uh, have to occur. Obviously, the most logical thing would be to play on the Wednesday the 30th. But, of course, the United have got a cup final on the Sunday against, uh, against Arpia as well. So who knows what will happen? And I'm sure the same, uh, the Gold Coast and Melbourne Knights are in the same predicament because they've got finals coming up as well. Yeah, now it'll be interesting. We were going to have Adrian Paulich, the president of the Gold Coast Knights, on tonight's show. Um, he couldn't make it, unfortunately, due to commitments, but he will be uh, hopefully joining us next week. So by next week, we should also have the, all the details because I think it's this Friday, if I'm not mistaken, they'll come out with the actual schedules, the um, the old, depending on venue availability and what you're not as well. But yeah, if you if you'd like to catch that interview with Ben Khan, the Melbourne Knights coach from the Football Out West show, go to the Football Out West show if, uh, YouTube channel and you'll be able to uh, uh, see the full replay of that particular interview. I might even try and get a, a link happening in the uh, in the uh, chat line. Ante, before we go, um, we must we must acknowledge Peter F Peter Finca. He says, "Evening, boys. Sorry, I'm late. Church just finished. Of course, it is Velika Gospa, or the Assumption, um, being celebrated today. One of the biggest religious uh, um, holidays in Croatia and in the Croatian community, both home and abroad. So let's uh, make special acknowledgement of that." Absolutely. Absolutely, Taunchy. Okay, moving on. We've got some winners, Taunchy. South Australian State League. The season has actually completed. So, um, and what ended up happening there was the Adelaide Croatia were 1-0 down at halftime. So it was looking shaky after a loss last week. We, of course, mentioned that the top three teams all lost last week, but they came in the second half. And they ended up 4-1 victors and have ended up premiers of South Australia and have been promoted to Needs the to be first division. In. Ricardo De Silva gets one back for Raiders. It's still not enough, but it's a start. And we have the closing stages of the game. Just watch for the reaction as soon as uh, the final whistle is blown. It's a 2-1 for Raiders. What did I say about that man? The man for a big occasion, boys. Joseph Costa. Drive that goal. It's Williams against Pudler. In a lot of space, Neon Kuru. Needs to have the shot. Has finished! And has that sealed promotion for Adelaide Croatia Raiders? Having a good last five minutes, find themselves another goal back in. There might be another. Williams getting through. Could this be another? Needs to be finished by De Silva! Oh! 
Your league winners, Adelaide Croatia Raiders for State League One. Jeez, there's going to be a lot to celebrate at the Adelaide Croatia oh. tournament this year. Let me How tell you. good was that? Auntie, I don't know. Did you end up watching that? Um, did you get the stream? Um, I certainly did. And um, I can tell you, I was very, very excited on the, you know, um, from uh, watching it on, on the stream, but watching some of the guys and many familiar faces in the Adelaide crowd, Adelaide Croatia crowd. Congratulations to the Adelaide Croatia Croatia Raiders. Um, that is fantastic. There's uh, one club now we need to get, and we'll talk a, bit, a little bit later in this, we just need one club to uh, qualify for next year's NPL in their particular state, and we'll have all the states covered as far as Croatian representation in the uh, elite statewide NPL competition. Absolutely. Fantastic stuff. Well done, Raiders. And of course, the finals are in South Australia are a top six system. So yep. the Raiders and Para Hills, who are top two, have the week off while all the eliminations um, happen. So um, good luck in the finals to LA Croatia Raiders. So um, bring home the double. Let me tell you, that'd be fantastic. Other victors last night was an enthralling fixture where Dandy came from behind. It wasn't looking good in the 85th minute with our 2-1 down, but two very late goals, one by Hennessy and one by Bidois. I think that's the way they pronounce it in the 96th minute. Uh, gave Dandenong City the promotion. So uh, well done and congratulations to Dandy. And um, Taunchy, I think you got a bit of footage there um, of that particular match as well. Yes, we've got the closing stages of that. And if you thought the Adelaide Croatia fans were jubilant, wait till you see the Dandy City fans in action as well. This happened last night on the bullying, uh, on the FC Bullying Facebook page. Webster wins the header. Ball flicked down, lofts, Westerdale feeds it back through, but that goes all the way through to Hall. He's going to take the precious seconds. Can't be long left here. Hall sends it long. Begarich wins the header. And that's it. Dandy Dog City are promoted back to the top tier of Victorian football. They've come from behind and won it with only minutes remaining. Riley Bidwa, the hero today. And what a moment this is for Dandy Dog City. They led early through Jack Webster. They'll peg back through Carlton Westerdale. Luke Lofts gave Bulleen the lead before Matthew Hennessy equalized with only minutes remaining. And then Riley Bidwa, the hero with a last minute header, winning the game for Danny Nog. They will be back in the top tier on the first time of asking. They will look to secure the premiership next week when they play Eastern Lions. Fantastic there you go, stuff. how good was that, huh? It's always yeah. good when you um, get relegated then can come back <laughs> the next year. That is uh, fantastic stuff. So well yeah. done, Dandy. Well done to Dandy Nong City. Uh, return to the top flight of the Victorian football. At least that that means we'll, 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 we'll once again have at least three Croatian clubs in the NPL Victoria competition. And hopefully Arte, four. Hopefully, uh, hopefully four. four. <laughs> we'll see. Um, and of course, yeah, I think I read somewhere where it, Adelaide Croatia had his first time back in the top tier since 2012. Um, yeah. Someone from Adelaide might actually want to correct me, but but yeah, it's been a while. So uh, well done, Adelaide Croatia. And yes, Taunchy, you bring up the WA State League Division. This is the other team that we want to see in the premier competition of the state. The Western Knights are leading by a single point. And with two rounds to play. So uh, they had a big win over Subiaco by one goal to nil on weekend. Well, unfortunately, lost 3 0. But this is the assignment. Um, Western Knights play the second place team on Saturday afternoon before another match against the fourth place team. So that's on the 26th of August. And interestingly enough, and someone from Perth might want to uh, confirm this, but in my schedule, it's a double header at the Creation Sports Centre this. Saturday afternoon, whereby we've got Gwellop and um, Western United playing there, one at three and one at uh, one at three and one at one p.m. So that'll be fantastic. Um, 
for that double celebration. And particularly if um, Western win, they will actually take out the title. So um, that'll be a huge afternoon there in that's, Western Australia. That's interesting. Uh, so if who would be the home side? Is it Western Knights, the home side? Western Knights are the home side for the remaining two rounds. I don't know why this game has been uh, moved away, whether it's it was something organised. Maybe someone from Perth can let us know. But um, that, that's yeah. a fantastic thing. And I think more Croatian clubs should do more of it because, um, yeah, I think it would be fantastic to showcase the, well, the different teams. Maybe it's a payback to uh, Gwala Croatia because Gwala Croatia defeated Mandura City was it last week, Anten? Did uh, Western Knights a favour? So maybe this is Western Knights returning well <laughs> Croatia the favour as part of their 35th anniversary celebrations. A uh, big, big shout out to everyone at Guelph Croatia who um, I think recently had their 35th anniversary celebrations. Uh, wonderful, wonderful um, uh, celebration there, the club. So look, folks, if anyone, um, any, any of the uh, Perth boys, um, girls, uh, are tuning in tonight, do in the chat section, let us know. Is that fair income? It's going to be a Croatian doubleheader at the Croatian Sports Complex um, or Croatian Sporting Complex. If th- if so, that is absolutely brilliant. And uh, brilliant. also, is it going to be streamed, folks? I would really like to know. Because, um, what, 3 p.m., that would be 1 p.m. 5, 5 p.m. here. 5, 5 p.m. p.m. So 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. here. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, that would be very, very good to know. Yep. Moving over to the ACC and another team coming first. I mean, this is fantastic. All these Croatian teams coming first. O'Connor Knights, two defeated in the Naro Panthers, one. Canberra Croatia had a huge 5-2 victory, and that puts them in fifth position. They've got three rounds to play in Canberra, and it's a big game this weekend, whereby we've got second versus first, and pretty much O'Connor will be able to take the title if they win this one because they are so far ahead, nine points ahead already from Gangalan. So uh, Sunday afternoon, they are away at the Gangalan Enclosed Oval and Canberra are at home this weekend. Moving on to MPL Queensland, another team another coming Another team. <laughs> the Gold Coast Knights had the one-all draw against the Queensland Lions. Two draws in a row. Uh, they're still five points ahead, two rounds to play. They haven't got the most difficult assignments. They're playing the 11th and the 8th place teams. Um, so, yeah, that will be huge to um, over in NPL Queensland. And Brenton Ray, draw is enough for O'Connor Knights to clinch the Premier's plates. It is indeed over in the ACT. Now, we've got some footage of that Gold Coast goal. Um... It's Devilay. And it's one all. all. Well, that helps as they step forward towards this Premiership. Maybe a point will do this afternoon. Yes, Fantastic maybe a stuff. point did it, that's for sure. Um, it's great. We've got a lot a lot of video footage today. Makes it a real audio-visual experience, aren't it? It sure <laughs> does. Very well done, Torchy, for uh, getting those access to those. So, well done. MPL Victoria, round 25 of 26. Melbourne Knights ended up 2-1 victors over Danger on Thunder. St. Albans have saved themselves from relegation with a huge 1-0 win over Moreland. Unfortunately, as we had the live cross last week, North Geelong lost by four goals to two to Oakley. So all to play for this Saturday afternoon. All games kicking off at the same time because it is the final round. And, of course, the big one being right there near your place, Taunchi, at Elko Park. Yeah. South Melbourne, can they do it? Can we get four Croatian teams in MPL Victoria next season? Um, obviously, yeah, that'll be fantastic stuff. And um, hopefully North Geelong can avoid relegation. Now, there's an interesting little side twist to all of this, aren't there? Um, South Melbourne taking on Heidelberg in a catch-up round. Now, originally, originally what was going to happen was um, the game was going to be played tomorrow. But then it would clash with the Matildas. Then it was going to be pushed back a week to the 23rd of August. Now, you ask yourself, that is not possible. How can you have a catch-up round game after after the conclusion of the season? This is Victoria. Football Victoria. Run by Greeks, allegedly. (laughs) Anything's possible. But there's been a twist today. I did see a report somewhere, um, apparently... 
that it is back on again tomorrow, but it is going to be like an earlier kickoff, like a 6.30 kickoff. Brenton, Brenton Ray, he may not be Croatian, but he watches this show religiously, and the man um, is in the know. He's the news hound. He can pro if anyone in Victoria can confirm whether South Melbourne are taking on uh, Heidelberg tomorrow, it's Brenton Ray. But anyway, look, the twist there is Heidelberg are in good form at the moment, and they're piping themselves up, priming themselves up for the Australia Cup. Um, South Melbourne, Heidelberg, massive rivals. If anyone wants to take points off Hellas, it's going to be Heidelberg. If they do take a point or two points, guess what happens? Hellas cannot, cannot win the um, minor premiership. And we'll bring that later up. Yeah, This is where it gets really interesting and very, very twisted. Should that happen, South Melbourne might just turn around and just say, bugger it, we're going to give all our young guys a go. We're going to give our youth guys a go. Giving North Geelong hope. <laughs> Here's Nostradamus Taunchy now starting to, you know, conspiracy theories. I like it. Good, good, good twist. Yeah, interesting. I've got the pleasure of commentating this game, and I'll tell you what, I am going to absolutely cut sick <laughs> if, if North Geelong survives this and we have four Croatian clubs in there next year's NPL. So tune in on th at 3 p.m. on NPL TV uh, this Saturday, folks. It's got to be, well, one hell of a game, that's for sure. That'll be amazing. And Brenton's come back and said 6.15 p.m. according to South Melbourne Facebook page. The game is kicking go. off tomorrow. So, yes. It's all falling into place, folks. It's right before the Matildas, place. indeed. <laughs> Over in MPL Tassie, round 17, Glenorchy ended up 3-0 winners. They are seven points behind Devon Point City, who are leading the competition at the moment. I think probably it's too late to catch up, and uh, particularly with Devon Point having a game in hand. But second place, third on Friday night at home at KGB Park for Glenorchy. Sydney United were victors. Great to oh, see. Yes. 2 1 victory versus Central Coast. It was a hard fought match, let me tell you. A couple of red cards, a couple of, uh, it, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a very hard fought match. It was great to see. Luke, Luke Tuckard saved the penalty. He actually got um, into the team of the week for Football New South Wales, as did Anthony Tomilich. So uh, well done to the both of them. And of course, last week we reported on the injury to Ante Bakmas. We did see him before the game and have a bit of a chat, and um, he was back at training, so he's all fine. So um, it was very, very happy to see after that big hit in the Australia Cup clash against Broadmeadow. So, yeah, and the winner, very late winner in this uh, game by my favourite name at the moment, Alessandro Lacalandra, um, and he <laughs> scored the goal very, very late in the piece. So there you go. And this weekend, Sydney United are at home, the final home game of the season against arch rivals well they're becoming arch rivals st george city head coach is mickey Ural, who used to play for sydney united and of course oh, Croatian yes. background so yes, um yes. so yeah it's going to be yeah and they've done great this is the first year in the npl new south wales and they are sitting in fifth position so um well done to mickey and st george city but i'm sure sydney united will want to beat them hustle zagreb were winners on the weekend beating sydney university by two goals to one two rounds left for zagreb and this week they're away to at Parramatta Melita Stadium um, against Parramatta. So let's hope they get the victory because Parramatta sitting second from bottom. And just a couple of years ago, they were in the New South Wales MPL 1. So there you go, how fortunes can change very quickly. And, folks, it's no coincidence that Ante got just a wee excited there about Zagreb Hurstville get, uh, getting a win there. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time coming, let me tell you. <laughs> so, and yeah. the other good news, further down south in Illawarra, South Coast won two goals to one, yes. which is fantastic to see. And so they've staved off relegation as well. They are finishing in 10th position this season. And they, in the last round, they are taking on Balambi who are coming last. I believe we've only had two points all season, two draws. So let's hope South Coast can finish the season with two big wins, and that'll be a Is it the bottom result. team gets relegated in, in the South Coast Premier League or the bottom two? Ask the people in the know in South people, Coast. People, <laughs> we want to know. Other, is South Coast United safe or do they need a win on this last day? And if so, if that is the case, folks, flock down to Elizabeth Park this Sunday uh, at 2.30 p.m. 
when um, South Coast takes on Belambia Rosellas. I know we've got a lot, a lot of South Coast United supporters. Bottom team, Ivo Spanicek says. All right, thank you, Ivo. Yeah, excellent. We're okay. safe. We're safe. Still, turn up. Turn up in your numbers, even though it's like a dead rubber. Turn up in your numbers down to Elizabeth Park and uh, support the South Coast United boys. Next year, I'm, I'm expecting South Coast United to be up near the top, okay? Nothing short Absolutely. of first or second. 100%. 100%. Yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> Brisbane Knights lost 6-1. It doesn't matter. They won the premiership. They've been promoted, but they got thrashed 6-1 by the team coming second. So um, they've got their final game of the season this Sunday. So get on down and support the team, even though they're, they're through and uh, obviously finals to come for Brisbane. So well done, Brisbane. And there was no game this week for uh, Newcastle, Croatia. But they are uh, playing at home this Saturday. So go down and support for the last game of the year. So the winners list. Taunchy. Oh, I like this. Oh, I like Record. This. It's a record. 12 clubs. <laughs> Look at that. So well done it. to all of these 12 clubs. Winners this very week. So obviously some of them were Gold Coast are there, even though they drew on the weekend because they won their Australia Cup match. So, um, so well done, everyone. And uh, let's hope there's plenty more to come. That's the type of uh, type of winners list we want to be seeing week in, week out. Come next year, we've got very, very high standards here at the Ozcrow Soccer Show. We want to ensure that we're always winners every week, folks. We're going to take a very, very short break. When we return, it's time for the Croatian Roundup. There's a lot happening over there. We're going to have to whiz through that very, very quickly because a little bit later on, we've got um, our guest coming on, our very, very special guest for tonight, newly signed uh, Central Coast Mariner or Central Coast Mariners women's signing, um, Bianca Garlic. She'll be joining us. Yes? Just very quickly, I was wrong. 2021 was the last time Adelaide Croatia were in um, the MPL. So there you go. Ooh, so you um, go. it's only two years. You got Not, the one uh, and two. I got the did, one did, and two. Did, yeah. two I don't know what incredible. I was reading. And the <laughs> Dallies, thank you, Ivo Spanicek. Dallies won their comp. So well done to all the Dallies um, up there uh, in the Willoughby region. They um, they got there. So uh, well done. Brilliant. Well done. Stay tuned. Welcome to Slavicek Studio Architecture. Our approach combines modern design with harmonious solutions tailored to your unique needs. We listen closely to your vision and turn it into a functional, beautiful living environment that truly feels like home. Our designs cater to your needs and evolve with you over time, encouraging deeper connections with family and friends. Specializing in custom residential homes and boutique apartments, we balance luxury and comfort to create a welcoming atmosphere for everyone to enjoy. Discover a world of inviting and captivating design at www.slavicekstudio.com.au. Contact us for a journey from idea to reality. Slavicek Studio Architecture, turning your dreams into reality. Welcome back to the Oscro Soccer Show and Macron Australia in a special promotion for all viewers of the Oscro Soccer Show. They are offering 5% discount to anyone that wants to buy any official Hayduk Split merchandise. So you can receive a 5% discount on official Hayduk Split merchandise thanks to a sponsorship agreement between Macron Sports Hub and the Oscro Soccer Show. Um, as we know, Macron is the official kit supply of Hayduk Aren't it? And they they do a really good job, and they've got their supplies of a lot, a lot of um, clubs, or starting to get a lot of clubs here in Australia. And they've got a in the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne in Clayton. They've got an actual sports hub now. When you order, and there's the website, folks, macronvic.com.au forward slash collections forward slash Hayduk dash split. Okay, um, 
where just before you pay, before you pay, put Ozcro, O Z C R O. That's the uh, that's the promotion code or the coupon code, if you like, and you will get five percent discount on anything that you purchase. Uh, you can also put you know your own name on there. You can put Livaya. You can put. Krovinovic, you can put uh, Torchi Prusats. You, you can, can put, put Torchi Prusats if you want. <laughs> Don't know why you'd want to do that, but anyway, you can do that if you want. And um, and look, there's some, there's the, all three kits: the home, the away, and the third kit. There are t-shirts there as well, um, and you can order it basically here, and it'll it'll arrive uh, within weeks directly from bologna italia wherever wherever it's actually made now folks the reason why we're talking up hayduk split is because macron of course sponsors hayduk if macron sponsored dinamo would do the same sort of thing there but dinamo sponsored by adidas if anyone knows anyone from adidas and they want to do a similar type of promotion for our um, lovely dinamo supporters yes def definitely but uh yeah if you're a hayduk supporter you should be one of the ninety two and a half thousand members if you're not already make sure you sign up my auntie, 92,500 members. And they've oh. apparently got 18,500, and that number's probably gone over 19, 18,500 season ticket holders. Now, um, that, that that's our little uh, uh, segue into this week's um, um, uh, um, um, Croatian roundup. Now, over the weekend, Varajdin uh, d recorded their first result. Now, after four rounds, Varajdin are still undefeated. One win and three draws. The hapless Rudesh the, um, on the wrong end of a 2 0 scoreline. Istra um, and Osijek, 4-4. Four, four, four. Good Lord, Istra are wow, involved in classic. so many goals. So are Osijek. Going, geez, this is, this is an incredible game. But uh, in front of a very, very disappointing crowd at um, split, Hayduk Splits Poljud, it was just... Just under 26,000, very disappointing. Um, Hayduk split defeated Slavin Belupo 3 0. Um, they're just a juggernaut at the moment. And if you read a lot of the reports in the Croatian press, they're actually saying the second half of this game, um, Hayduk played probably the best half under under Ivan Leko. Now, you might be thinking, well, who is Slavin Belupo? Who, 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 who cares about Slavin Belupo? Um, they're not important, but the thing is. When clubs come up against Dinamo and when clubs come up against Hayduk in Croatia, apart from the fact that, you know, they always draw a big crowd. So, you know, every club loves Hayduk and Dinamo coming to their, to their little neck of the woods. But they don't want to humiliate themselves. So what do they do? They do the old park the bus bunker system, yeah? Um, and it takes patience, it takes perseverance, and in some cases – as we saw with uh, with uh, Dinamo and Gorica, um, you're unable to break down that bunker. So Hayduk, when 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 the when the the, the gates started opening, man, Livaya he scored one, scored, scored two. In fact, um, it was involved in a couple of assists here and there. Um, it was just an incredible game to watch. Um, and so, look, things are really changing in Croatian football at the moment. But where we wanted to change, Ante, is 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 well outside what do we call it internationally because that's where we want things to change we really really want things to change in a big big way and it all starts um well we're, we're going to mention that um that's the uefa news i will jump we'll uh we'll talk about oh i've got I'm, I'm missing that um uh graphic unfortunately where uh dinamo zagreb are taking on aic athens and that's happening well in the wee hours of tomorrow morning. That's happening, I think it's about 4 o'clock or something like that. Um, the first leg is in Zagreb. The return leg will be a week later in Athens. And we all know all of the uh, much publicised um, controversy, the drama that surrounded this game. But putting all the off-field dramas aside, it's on the field that really counts. Doma Vida, the Croatian legend, well, he'll be uh, fronting up the uh, Ajax Athens defence. And um, look... Either way, Ante, what's going to happen? One thing's for certain. Once this qualification um, phase is over and either Dinamo have qualified for the Champions League, which we hope will be the case, it looks like a lot of the top players are going to be leaving. Ivan Ushets, Šutalo, Livakovic, possibly even Petkovic as well. Uh, Šutalo yeah. signed for some like 25 million euros. Um, Livakovic, uh, Ivan Ushets has also been apparently 
signed by Fenner de Bache, uh, not Fenner de Bache, Feyenoord, sorry, um, in the Dutch for about eight million. So there's going to be millions and millions of dollars coming Dinamo's way. Uh, no doubt they will have to then uh, sign replace players, replace yeah. players. And there's talk that they have already signed Lucas Kachavenda and um, Jan, uh, what's his name? It slips my mind from uh, Lokomotiva, Stojkovic, from uh, uh, Lukas Stojkovic, I think his name is. Um, two promising, promising, electrifying uh, youngsters in the Lokomotiva Zagreb team. So, uh, yeah, so already... As long as they can stay competitive, you know, with those replacements in the Champions League, there's nothing worse than obviously qualifying, yeah. but not, you know, only eking out, you know, draws or uh, heavy losses, etc. So, uh Hopefully, if they do lose a lot of players, they can replace them quite quickly. And, you know, they've got a good crop of youngsters to replace them as well. So they can make more transfers, of course. Yeah. Now, moving along to the uh, UEFA Conference League. So this is all happening Friday morning. Osiek, they, they got hammered by Adana Demirispor, a Turkish side, 5-1. So they now return to Osiek, hopefully at the, um, um, uh, at the uh, Opus Arena. They'll be able to reverse that, but it will take a minor miracle for them to do so. Rijeka are in a far better position. Their first um, uh, round, first leg uh, finished in 3-1 win over FC Torshavn from the Faroe Islands. Um, at 4.15 a.m. Friday morning, um, they return to the Rujevica Stadium in Rijeka, and this should be a mere formality. The big one's going to be um, um, in, in Salonika in Greece, Hayduk split travels with a nil-nil first leg result. They dominated proceedings completely. They hit the woodwork on a couple of occasions. They just weren't able to score that important goal. Uh, Pauk, this is going to be, as they, they're saying, uh, you know, hell, hell on earth, because um, it is going to be what Pauk experienced in split, Hayduk will now experience in Salonika. So this will be um, a big, big game at 3.30 in the morning. And... Um, um, as we mentioned, in the uh, Europa League, uh, Zrinski Mostar, they've really got, uh, uh, you know, the, the, against Breda Blik Kopa Volgur. Um, they defeated them 6-2, and now they travel to, um, where are they from? Iceland, I think it is. Um, and they, they've got a real, real chance of uh, progressing through to the... That's uh, fantastic. Yeah, to the... To, and making history as the first... Uh, uh, very hard team ever to make it to a group stage, but they are ours. They are Croatian at mm. the end of the day. All right, uh, awesome. let's turn our attention now to domestic matters. Uh, this week, as we mentioned, um, there were the, th the the three results. Lokomotiva and Dinamo, that's postponed. Gorica and Rijeka is postponed. Just like the Dinamo Zagreb Varaždin game this week coming, that's also being postponed. Um, so Dinamo Zagreb are going to have this wicked, wicked schedule of catch-up games, and this could work against them later on in the season when they always have this um, backlog of games. Um, they're weary. They've maybe lost players, players injured, so it could really backfire against them. Round five fixtures, Slavia Belupa at home to Istra, Osijek at home to Gorica, Rudesh taking on Hajduk split, um, and this is probably going to be Rudesh's biggest crowd of the season. Uh, because uh, it's probably going to be like a home game at the Karanchevich Road Stadium for the split journey. There's a lot of Hayduk supporters in Zagreb, and they will be coming out of the woodwork, no doubt. Rijeka taking on Lokomotiva, um, and those three games, Osijek, Rudesh and Rijeka, they're playing their home games wee hours of Monday morning. So if we then quickly look at the ladder, uh, this is after uh, round three, not fully completed round four, I should say. Hayduk split sitting on top. Um, and, you know, three wins from three games to start the season. This has not happened for a long, long time. So there's a real euphoria building at the moment. Huge Osijek, crowds. Yeah. Osijek second. They're, they're also undefeated. Uh, Rijeka third with six points. And then we've got Varazdin and Gorica also undefeated with six and five, followed by Dinamo, Slavin, Lokomotiva, Istra, and unfortunately, Rudesh on the bottom at the moment. Now, over the weekend, we also had the Prva Liga, which is the second tier competition kickoff. Um, Shibani, Go Shibani. Yes. They, they um, relegated from the high NL last season. They um, have gone straight to the top with a 3-0 thumping of Vukovar, who was the runners-up last year. 
Is that an ominous sign for the rest of the league? I don't know. But uh, Dugopolje beat Sesvete, a newly promoted side, 1 0. Orient and Dubrava, 1 all draw there. Sibalia, everyone's favourite second team, they defeated Croatia Zmiavci. 1-0 and Solin and Bielo Brdo, or should we say Hajduk split juniors and Bielo Brdo uh, fought out a nil-nil draw. There's something like nine former Hajduk split juniors from last season now playing at Solin on a dual reg- registration. Zrinski Jurjevac, the other team that got promoted from the uh, Druga Liga, they defeated Jarun 2-0. So a great result there for, um, for um, the newly promoted side. Now, they will travel to Vukovar in the wee hours of Saturday morning. That's our time. Um, Vukovar hosting Zirinsky Yurievac on Sunday. Dubrava at home to Tsibalia. Bielo Brdo at home to Dugopolje. And Solin and Shibenik in the big uh, Dalmatian derby. On Monday morning, Croatia Zmijavci host Sesvete. And then uh, Monday night, Croatian time. It looks like this is going to be a regular thing. Um, Jarun Zagreb taking on Orient in the um in in the uh, last game of the second round so if we have a quick look at there at the round one standings you can quite easily see all that is going on there and very very quickly just returning now to the um to the uh top goal scorers chart in the um high nl the Hrvatska nogomet the liga uh, an unlikely um uh, leaderboard there mio Saptash from osiek he's on five goals and fran brodic um, who is in electrifying form from Varajdin. He's scored five goals as well. Levi there on three goals. Luka Stojkovic, who is, is Dinamo bound. He scored two. Jankovic from Rijeka, former Dinamo. He's on two. Bruno Goda. This is an interesting story. Bruno Goda in something like um, three or four seasons only scored three goals and now in three games he scored four or, so, or two goals plus some, um, I think, in, in one of the... Um, uh, Europa uh, Conference League games as well. Rokas Pukstas from Hajduk, he scored two, but there's an issue with him. He could be out for a while. He's injured. Plus Saricek to Christian Lovric to and Ramon Mieres two goals as well. Um, now, that brings us to the end of uh, uh, of, uh, of our Australian-Croatian roundup. We're going to take a little bit of a break. Did you see, uh, did you see Yakov? If you haven't seen Yakov Medic's goal for Ajax, that was an oh, absolute I heard screamer about it. as well. Yeah, absolute screamer. And yeah, uh, it's well worth uh, looking up. Um, and of course, yeah, there were some kind words. Of course, the English Premier League started. And of course, um, Persic had some uh, kind words from Ange. So um, let's hope that, um, you know, that relationship continues and Persic can get a few more minutes. And of course, uh, Chelsea, we both had Kovacic and. Guardiola um, have some minutes come off the bench for Chelsea, so let's hope that they uh, play some more um, in the coming games. Yeah. Now, um, before we, we go to a commercial break, once again, are you a Haydook Split supporter in Australia? You can get re- you can receive a 5% discount there. There's the website at the bottom there, macronvic.com.au forward slash collections forward slash Haydook dash split. And all you have to do is, um, is, is just pop that, um Ozcrow coupon in and um and you will get a five percent discount we're going to take a very very short break and when we return it will be time for our guest bianca garlic who is uh, just recently signed with the central coast mariners don't go away folks
Oh, welcome back to the Oscro Soccer Show. Now, before we go, do go to our guest, we've got a couple of public announcements to be made. Uh, tomorrow is not the only, um, it's not uh, the uh, Glen, the Matildas aren't the only ones with a huge game on Wednesday night. The Knights women, the Glen Orkey Knights women, they've got a League Two Cup final and that kicks off at 6 p.m. And the club rooms will be then open for the uh, big Matildas game afterwards. So that's at um, KGV Reserve, which is the home of the Glen Orkey Knights and is also at the moment the um, state Football Centre for Tasmania, and that's on tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Our girls, the Glenorchy Knights, uh, what's the female version of Knights? Knightesses? <laughs> the, 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 the She Knights? I don't know. Uh, they're taking on the Newtown Eagles, and that is at 6 p.m. to be followed by the Australia-England uh, World, Women's World Cup game, and that is going to be, of course, in the, um, the Croatia Glenorchy club rooms afterwards. Now, Absolutely, um, yeah, very exciting. Now, now, for those of you that have jumped on board and um, and are playing the HNL Fantasy game, um, I was very, very happy that last week I was leading the pack, but I've had to concede it. I've had to concede it. Last year's co-host Josip Zilic, he, 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 the self-proclaimed he, what, what's it? Master, Igna, master, ignoramus. He reckons he doesn't know much about the HNL. What a load of you so know, he's leading it. He's leading the competition. So a big shout out to um to our fellow uh, our former co-host of last year, um uh, Josip Zilic, who is leading the HNL fantasy. And next week, um, well, we'll definitely have to have the graphic of of where everyone is at the moment. But uh, yeah, well done, Josip. And well done to everyone who jumped on board and he's playing the HNL Fantasy game. I'll tell you what, until you play it, I play it. It's pretty fun and it does really force you to improve your knowledge of the Croatian game, doesn't it? Especially the lesser known clubs. Yeah, absolutely. And it is fun unless you're coming second last like myself. <laughs> there is still hope. There is still hope, mate. Uh, look, it's time now for our guest, Auntie. Would you like to do the uh, introductions? Yeah, of course. Uh, we are very, very honoured to have a fabulous guest. Obviously, um, the Women's World Cup has been going gangbusters and a lady who's been playing in the A-League women's competition um, right here in Australia is none other than our guest coming up right now, which is Bianca Garlic. And uh, we'd like to say a big Dobra Vecher. Good evening to Bianca. How are you, Bianca? Good. How are you guys going? Good. Now, you're, you're coming from, uh, first of all, Bianca, thanks for joining us here on the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Absolute pleasure having you. But uh, where are you coming from? Your studio looks like your car. <laughs> it is my car. Um, sorry about that, guys. Um, no. That's fine. Home for this one. Fitting this in within the crazy, chaotic schedule that I have. So, um, yeah, happy to be, but unfortunately don't have the awesome um, Croatian jerseys behind me or, or jersey either so yeah <laughs> all good bianca tell us um what happened on saturday night i mean obviously you watched the game then you went to the semi-final tell, tell us a bit about your saturday night and how you celebrated yeah so my family and i watched um watched the matildas play from home we had tickets booked to the to the england match in homebush but um we stayed home to watch the matildas beforehand we thought we'd have plenty of time getting there but um with extra time chaotic penalties how many there was about 20 um we ended up actually being late for the england game but and we were exhausted as well um so That's, we all were <laughs> stressful <laughs> but yeah look it was it was an awesome game from the matildas you could tell they played with their you know their heart on their sleeve during that match they wanted the win um it was an unfortunate that we didn't get you know we didn't get the win earlier in the game um, and also early in the penalties as well. Um, we definitely had our chances. But, look, at the end of the day, we made it. We're going in um, to the semi final tomorrow, which is going to be a cracker of a game against England. Um, but, yeah, hectic Saturday night. Then you had Colombia versus England, and that game in itself was exhausting as well. So it was an awesome Saturday night, I'd say. Yeah, Bianca. Now you know you're in the coal face of women's football here in this country. You've um, you've just recently signed with Central Coast Mariners. Um, it's it's um, it, it's it's fantastic news because last year you missed out the entire season with a with a torn ACL. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I finished up um, with the Wanderers the previous season. Um, was very keen to get back into MPL. I play for Sydney University first grade. 
And, yeah, unfortunately in the first game of the season with um, Sydney Uni, I tore my ACL, MCL and my meniscus all in one because I just thought, you know, if I'm going to do it, might as well do it. <laughs> do it properly. Yeah. Do it a lot. I don't do half ass jobs, so <laughs> properly. Um, and, yeah, I, you know, I've never had um, that type of injury um, or sort of had to face um, something so mentally draining that that injury sort of entails for 12 months. But, look, we, um, we made it through. I had a great support system around me. I had a fantastic um, team guiding me through the rehab um, and I'm very, yeah, I'm very excited to be signing with Central Coast Mariners this season and just getting back out there on the field, building consistency. And, um, yeah, I mean, I love the game. I was very upset to be away for it, from it for so long. Um, so, yeah, I'm very excited to, to be back. Fantastic. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your football journey. Obviously, growing up in a Croatian household and everything like that, um, you know, was football part of your journey from the beginning and, and that, that's how you fell in love with it and obviously started playing at a, at a very good level at, at a youth um, age? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I've been brought up in a football household. So, you know, there's always the no balls rule in the house, but um, me and my brothers would always be, you know, trying to trying – to, play play around the house um we've got a dog as well so <laughs> trying to do everything we could when the parents weren't home um i know they're listening oh, i'm gonna lose it up, so, <laughs> sorry sorry dad um but yeah i mean we, we've always um grown up on soccer it's been the number one sport in our household i went through um, you know water polo tennis um i did baseball for a little bit i trialed it all but at the end of the day, my love was always for football. Um, I started it when I was four. Um, I was following my older brother's footsteps. Um, I was trying to play with the boys. And at that point in time, the boys were all you sort of had to play with. So I was growing up playing with boys until I was about 12. Um, and then got the tap on the shoulder to move into the women's game. Started with Sydney Uni, actually, um, when I was about 14. And been there ever since in the um in the MPL first um first division so yeah um my my love for football has sort of um always been around since since I was young mm. unfortunately I hate to say it but my brothers weren't as good so <laughs> <laughs> in the family so yeah no, I, had to, I had to shove them to the side early on and look they're supporting me now um, oh, that's the way and they've always been around but yeah they um they made me mentally strong they made yeah. me yeah, resilient um they shoved me around like you know i was one of the boys so i think that shaped um the yeah. way i play then and the way i play now B bianca i i do have to apologize firstly this is one of the best interviews i tell you what but uh, i have to apologize i nearly lost it there because i've got an 11 year old and that no ball rule, yep, we, my wife and I have given up, you know. He's, he yeah. loves his soccer to the point that we've actually just turned around and said, well, get him one of those plush um, um, first soccer balls for babies and you can oh, knock yeah. it around the house it, as long as you don't smash the vitrine or anything like yeah. that. But but uh, no, when you said the no balls rule, how many how many Croatian parents, I think, over the oh, generations – have uh, implemented that rule only to just say, <laughs> so I bought it. Yeah. I know, though, those plush balls still make a difference. I remember me and my brother kicked one. We broke one of my mum's vases. For the next three hours, we were in the garage trying to super glue it together and put it back in the same place. I don't know why. I thought she wouldn't notice. But he gave us a couple of days, made us feel a bit better, and then decided to address the fact that we had ruined her favourite and most expensive vase. Oh, Croatian oh, mugs. When they've got an eye, they will notice the smallest yeah. little speck. But, uh, yeah. but look, um, you know, I'm sure you gave her a good present uh, in the end just to make up for it the next Mother's Day or Christmas. Oh, yeah. Or oh, yeah. yeah. Always. Now, speaking of presents, um, we were talking about this, Ante and I, earlier today. Uh, it's reported that the English uh, national women's team have given uh, the Central Coast Football Club a very, very nice present of something like half a million dollars worth of gym equipment that they've left behind conveniently after not needing it anymore. Um, is that true? That's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I did hear about that actually um, through my coach first before the media got onto it. Yeah. Um, 
And I mean, she was excited. We're all excited. Um, obviously, being uh, this our first season for, I guess, the Mariners in a long time for the women's, um, the facilities that we're using are a little bit different to um, the men's. They're training at the Center of Excellence higher into New, uh, Central Coast, sorry, where um, training a little bit closer to Gosford. Um, so the facilities there are a little bit different, not terrible, but also if the England national team want to give me $500,000 <laughs> worth of gym equipment, I'm not going to say that. So, um, this, is, this is reminiscent of the garlic household. The girls oh, have yeah. overtaken the boys, and I think this is what's happening at Central Coast. The girls now are getting better equipment to train with than the uh, boys. Well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think it makes a difference, like having that – equipment shows just how you know professional we want to be in this competition and if you have I'm not saying that equipment is going to be the be or end or of you know a reflection of how you play but I think it definitely makes you feel um stronger as an athlete if you have um all those facilities around you as well yeah how do you um you know what's your training sort of like how many nights a week all that sort of stuff plus you've got to juggle work right because there's still no full-time professionalism in the uh, a-league women's is there bianca yeah that's it unfortunately it's um it is a part-time schedule i guess we're actually training in the morning so we'll be doing um probably about five to six sessions a week um one of those involving a game as well um i'm currently just about to finish my physiotherapy degree uh so i've got a little bit of placement left um but next year i am looking at working as well so i guess the biggest challenge for me is trying to juggle football um and give 100 percent to football and then also look at um finding a job that suits my schedule and something that i love outside of football um you know i've always been someone who's juggling multiple things at once and that's what I sort of enjoy to do. Um, and I never sort of want to give 50% to an, anything. Um, so hopefully, depending on um, what I find next year with in terms of employment, they're um, accommodating and they understand my schedule. But yeah, it's, um, it's unfortunate that the women's game is still part time. Um, and you can't obviously rely on that, that income to uh, set you up. Um, but at the end of the day, we are growing compared to how the A-League women's has been in the past to where it is now. It is on the upwards trend. Absolutely. It's a little bit slow, but it's mm. on the upwards trend. It'll get there. It'll get there. Now, absolutely. Now, um, unfortunately, folks, uh, the Matildas will, if they do get past uh, England, they won't win gold. They won't win first place at this year's Women's World Cup because a once great um, expert pundit said, um, and the translator <laughs> means there's no gold without any Croats. And unfortunately, the Matildas don't have one. However, however right. Bianca, the um, amount of Australian Croatian girls that are now women that are starting to play in the um, A League women's is on the increase. We had Daniela Galic, no relation apparently to you, no. she, uh, on the show a few weeks back. She's at Melbourne City. We've got Alana Cerne or Cerne, young lass down at Western United as well. Um, so we're, we're growing. We're growing the numbers, which is great to see. Um, are you aware of any other Australian Croatian um, footballers playing in the A League, Bianca? Not that I know of, to be honest with you. I think you, yeah, you've named the ones that I would have thought of as well. Um, look, there's probably heaps up and coming, um, and probably some that aren't recognised yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for for now, we're a, we're a small community, but but we definitely growing. Grow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Taunchy, hope, yep. Taunchy, hang on. You know, just like we claim Graham Arnold as our own for playing for Sydney Croatia, you know, the Correct. Western Knights claim Sam Kerr as their own because she played Correct. at the Western Knights, of course. So you know, the two you know arguably best footballers, <laughs> male and female, have come from Croatian clubs. That's it. That's it. And the more connections we have with Croatians, I think we could, you know, win the World Cup. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> let's, aim, let's aim for high. Let's, let's aim for high. Uh, Bianca, that's been absolutely fantastic. Now, when when does the um, – so the preseason's obviously has started now. Um, when does the actual season itself uh, kick off? And uh, what's it like looking this year? Because obviously Central Coast is a, is a new team, a, an expansion team. And there is talk that it will eventually go to a full home and away season. Will that be happening this year or will that probably be happening in, in the next year or two years to come? 
So I think it will be happening within the next year or so. Mm-hmm. Um, in the past, the last um, season that I had with the Wanderers, we only had about 14 rounds. So it was um, it was oddly structured. You played every team once and you played some teams twice. So how they figured that out and I guess the, the justice between who you ended up playing twice, I'm not exactly sure. Mm-hmm. So the more... Um, we get closer to a full home and away season, it'll be a true reflection of, um, you know, uh, score lines and which team shows up on the day. Um, in terms of Central Coast Mariners with the new kids on the block, um, Western United with the new kids on the block last year absolutely killed it. So we're sort of looking to do the same, if not better. Um, we just want to get into the season. We want to show the rest of um, the A-League clubs what we have. Um, we are new. We know we're new, but we're not to be underestimated. Yeah, Can I just yeah. ask, Bianca, uh, when you played at Canberra, did you find that you the team got a lot more attention because, you know, that was obviously on the national stage and there was no uh, A-League men's team. And so uh, maybe you got a lot more media attention. You you got to get some decent crowds um, in in Canberra as well, didn't you? Yeah, we did actually. So um, that's a good point actually. So yeah, Canberra don't have that um, men's side of things. So the focus was on us um, football-wise and then the Raiders um, NRL-wise. But the the crowds that we got at some of the games were phenomenal really the way they got around um female football the season i had at canberra was awesome as well we ended up making top four and getting into the semi-final so i think all those factors put together um as well as the fact that we were winning games we were drawing attention we were showing um you know the rest of canberra one of the smaller states, they'd say, um, you know, what we have. Um, And Canberra was excited. They they wanted to support us. They wanted to get around what um, what we had sort of created. And everyone was excited when we made the semifinals, you know. It was in the paper. It was all on um, social media. Um, It was just spread across that state. Um, And whether that was because maybe there wasn't enough men's coverage, I'm not sure. It probably could have helped um but yeah i i i really enjoyed canberra and i thought um you know although we were sort of on um i guess not having the best season the previous um season we showed them what we had that season at at the start of the show torchy showed that bomb of a goal that you scored take us through that goal i mean that must be something that's uh replayed in the garlic household so many times yeah Yeah, look, um, I don't, yeah, I just remember thinking that game, oh, this keeper is off her line all the time. Um, And I remember even when I, when I was thinking about shooting it, I sort of looked up and thought, can I hit that? And I looked back down and looked back up and she still hadn't moved. So I was like, oh, you know, screw it. I'm going to have a go. Um, (laughs) And it just came off my foot beautifully. um, And it sort of floated over her. She got a touch, but you know, for me, that was enough. That was my first A League goal. Um, oh, was it really? Oh, what a goal to score from what David! What a goal! Wow! <laughs> I was, um, yeah, I was stoked. It was, um, it was obviously in Canberra, so in front of a home crowd. I had family around as well, so it was, yeah, it was a really nice moment. Now, one of our viewers, um, P- Petar Finka, makes a really, really good point, and I'll bring that up on 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 the screen. Hey, do split have a women's team now? Um, as do Dinamo, as does Dinamo Zagreb as well, and and the, and the Croatian women's league is starting to grow as as well in quality as in quantity. Any thoughts on trying your luck overseas, whether it be in Croatia or anywhere else for that matter? Look, I have definitely contemplated overseas. Um, I think for me, the last couple of years has been on my um, physiotherapy degree. It's one of those degrees that unfortunately you can't do um, online. You have to be in person um, and it's a skill set that you do have to practice regularly. So in terms of going overseas, I didn't really consider it too much because I was sort of trying to juggle um, that at the same time. Now um, I'm obviously nearing the end of that. So I think in terms of overseas opportunities, um, I'm more than happy to to take some on and, um, you know, depending on uh, sort of 
how I come back from my knee and just growing confidence within this next A-League season. Um, yeah. I'm hoping there'll be opportunities at the end of that. So, yeah, definitely considering it now that I'm nearing the end of my degree. Yeah. Now, um, I was going to say Tony Chavar has made, a, made any, uh, another point. Would could, Can she represent Croatia, Croatia national team? Bianca, all we've got to say is about three, four weeks ago, we had a young fella from Sydney, Josip Orlovic, who's in Croatia, on our show. After that, he was contacted by the <laughs> president of the Croatian cricket team, asking him to play cricket for it. Now, we may well have someone watching this show and they may get in touch with you, asking you to play for Croatia, maybe the futsal team, maybe the women's soccer the team. The love it's there. The love it's yeah, there, indeed. Yeah, just just probably exp expect a call up there. But uh, on, on things a bit more serious, uh, I guess now there are a lot of young girls that are going to be looking, and boys for that matter, looking at the, the exploits of the Matildas doing really well, and they'll be inspired to, to, to take their soccer to another level or even take up the sport. Um, you're probably now one of our pin-up girls as far as the Australian Croatian um, women are concerned. What would you say to, to, to you know, young seven, eight, nine-year-old uh, uh, Ivanas and Maritzas and, and of this world? What would you say to them? What, would, what advice would you give to them about getting to the top in this country that is the A-League women's? Yeah, I mean, I think at that age, I'd probably just say, um, you know, if you've That's got... your brother? <laughs> Gets up that way? Yeah, <laughs> Is that what break of ours. Break of ours. <laughs> break of ours. Get a plush bar. ball. Yeah. The bars. The bars. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like, uh, my best advice I'd probably give to sort of any female coming through is, you know, it's cliche, but just never give up. You know, like, if you think you're good enough, if you believe in yourself, um, you know, if you back yourself, you will um, make it. You you will get yeah. spotted. You know, I'm not saying you might be the first one spotted, but you will get spotted eventually. Um, me personally, um, coming through the youth system, I mentioned I was with Sydney University, um, but a massive system they had back then. They still have it now, but it's not as big as Football Institute. So a lot of scouting was done through Football Institute. Um, and it sort of felt like, uh, or at the time, um, if you weren't with Football Institute, you didn't really get a look in. So, you know, a lot of girls my age started to lose hope started mm -hmm. thinking, you know, they weren't good enough um, when they were, but they just hadn't been spotted at that time. And I think if they had just held on a little bit longer, they really could have um, made a difference within the football community. So I think the best advice I've got is if someone tells you, you know, you're slow, um, show them why, why you're fast. If someone tells you that you're unfit, you know, show them in the next game why you are fit. Don't give anyone a reason. Um uh, to tell you that you're not good enough because good. if you believe that you are um, and you keep working and you don't get complacent, then, you know, there'll always be light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great advice, Bianca. So have you actually tested those ligaments yet? Have you had any trial matches or you're still in the training paddock and uh, building, building your muscles back up? What stage are you at? Yeah, so um, I hit my 12 months back in uh, May. So I was loading up through Sydney Uni um, training sessions and I've probably had about six or seven games with them now. So started off with low minutes and then working into the full 90. Pretty sure like I was the most unfit I've ever been in my whole life and I couldn't breathe for most of that time. But, <laughs> you know, when you push through and you believe you can do it, like my advice. Yeah, um, mentality, you know, that's right end up getting it back so yeah i've definitely tested the good old knee out it's feeling good um i'm feeling fit again and now going into central coast i'm yeah i'm i'm feeling a lot more confident and you've got that half a million dollars of gym equipment to even That's strengthen it. your arm uh, leg That's up even more yeah uh bianca thank you so well, much just One more. quickly just we quickly before we can't go tomorrow without a prediction for tomorrow night how do you think the girls are going to go, oh. Bianca. Of course, the big semi final. Are you going to the game or are you just uh, kicking back and watching with the family? What are you doing? Yeah, no. So, um, uh, me and my family actually bought tickets months ago, not knowing who was going to make it. But I got around them and said, come on, who cares who's going to make it? It's going to be a good game. So now they're all thanking me. <laughs> <laughs> that 
someone told me from work that the tickets are selling for a thousand dollars. Wow! And, you know, yeah, they are. it's a hot I'm ticket. This, you know, this close to telling them I'm selling the tickets, I'm taking the profit, and the <laughs> but you know, my good heart told me I shouldn't do that. So, <laughs> and now I'm not rich. So. <laughs> Yeah, we're all going to the game tomorrow. Um, we're all actually very excited. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's going to be an awesome atmosphere. I can't even imagine what it's going to feel like. Um, but we're very excited. We've got good tickets. Um, and prediction, uh, I'm back in Matilda's, of course. So I'm going to say 2-0 win. Well, Terrific. Terrific. Fantastic. Terrific. And, and what about, have you got tickets to the final? Did you think that far ahead? <laughs> Out. Way to rub it in. Could have been a double or nothing. No, maybe. that's not right. To, exactly. Not too. Right. Not too. Not too Enjoy Bianca. it. Enjoy it. I was going to say, uh, Bianca, thank you very <laughs> much. We Sorry. The same time. I was just going to say one more thing that uh, you got a lot of um, hellos from uh, the Shardage family here tonight as well, of course. Uh, oh, so, yes. yes. So, so good there. chance to say hello to uh, everybody yeah. who's, who's tuning in as well. Yeah. Shout out to um, Fred for uh, letting me know and getting me in contact with Ante. So, appreciate that. He's actually my godfather. So, um, I don't say this often, but I love you, Fred. Um, oh, there you go. Another oh, exclusive. Go. We've got another. We all do. Exclusive. We all do. <laughs> and uh, to my own family, hello. <laughs> awesome. Um, awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much for joining us. Yeah, well done. Thank you, Bianca. We really appreciate it. We're going to have to get you again on the show. It's been very entertaining. But next time we'll do it from a studio where, where the lighting's a little bit better. But, uh, um, but nonetheless, we really, really appreciate really you appreciate taking it. the time and uh, coming on the Oscro Soccer Show. And good luck for the season. Absolutely. We'll be if you live on the Central Coast, go follow Bianca. Go get us some home games. Yes, 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 yes. Good on you. Thank mm. you. Bianca Garlic. Oh, how good was that interview? That, that was, was fun. absolutely brilliant. I thoroughly enjoyed that and thoroughly absolutely. enjoyed having the young lady, uh, Bianca Garlic, on our show. Uh, definitely be following the uh, Central Coast Mariners women in the A League women because of Bianca, that's for sure. Until we're going to take a very, very short break and then we'll wrap things up. It's been a big show and, um, yeah, looking forward to a massive, massive week ahead. Don't go away, folks. It's the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Whew, I'm out of breath. Season, um, <laughs> season two, episode 19, which means episode 49. Who's to say who's young, who's old, compared to who? Age is complicated. You see, most people really stop getting older at age... 26, but their bodies just don't get the memo. So, hidden inside most over 50 ish year olds is the soul and spirit of a 26 year old with the same loves and desires and hopes and dreams, just in slightly different packaging. Why waste time wandering when you could be enjoying? It's your life, and life is what you make it. So, what are you waiting for? I think well, Bianca's brother, Josh, is uh, blaming her for breaking the vase, it looks like, because he's messaging <laughs> through as well. <laughs> a big, big shout out to Josh. He's all that pushing and shoving uh, his mate, right. Bianca, um, the, what she's doing. A-League uh, women's. Yeah. No, next week, folks, we've got our 50th episode. Um, are we planning anything special? No, we're not planning anything special. We're expecting two clubs out there to plan something very, very special for us. Go on Western Nights clinch the uh, promotion to the NPL WA competition and to the North Geelong Warriors beat Hellas this week at, on, on home turf and um, they will survive and be the fourth Croatian club in next year's NPL Victoria competition. We don't want to sell. We want to celebrate your successes. Okay, folks. So it's over to you. Auntie. And speaking of successes, I had the pleasure of watching an association under 16s game on the weekend, which was uh two nil down the boys got back to two all it was fantastic so there's a lot of grand finals happening for Hersel Zagreb Association this weekend a lot of them on Saturday at Penzas Park so uh get on down there starting at 10 a.m at 11 40 and 3 p.m so it's under 18 b boys at 3 p.m under 16 a boys at 11 40 a.m and under 15 b boys at 10 a.m and on Sunday the girls are at Poulton Park 
playing against Dell. So it'll be a big game. So under 12B girls. So good luck to all those Hersel Zago Association teams for making the grand final. And yeah, go, go out and support them. It's it's a lot of fun uh, watching watching the young kids run around. Thank you. And on that note, folks, thank you very much for being a part of tonight's show. It was a rip. I really, really enjoyed that interview with Bianca Gali. Oh, and, and Philip Kodogovic won as well. I know it's not That's possible. That's right. He did too. He, he uh, knocked out that, that Australian uh, uh, boxer. Yeah, so uh, well done to Philip. Uh, good night, folks, and all the best. And we'll see you next week at our normal time of Wednesday night. So next week, we're back to our Wednesday night time slot. Until then... Um, there's a lot of lot of football, a lot of soccer, a lot of the world game happening over the next seven, eight days. Until then, bye-bye. Like the notch.